Hey dear students, this is the next part of our topic on taxation. This part has a direct link to our previous topic which dealt with share capital. You remember from our previous topic that uh, dividends are the means by which a company distributes its retained earnings to their shareholders. Now, nothing in life is free, as we have probably said once or twice before. So when the shareholders receive the dividends, they will be taxed on it. What we need to understand here is that when dividends are distributed by a company, it is the shareholders who bear or have to pay the tax on that dividend income. However, it is the responsibility of the company that distributes or declares the dividends to withhold the tax, the tax portion on the dividends, and then pay it over to the revenue service on behalf of the shareholders. So in that instance, it is very similar to employees tax, where the employer needs to withhold the income tax portion from an employee, employee's salary or wage and pay it over to the revenue service on behalf of the employee. Both individuals and companies, therefore, whoever invests in a company shares, they have to pay tax on the dividend income. Currently, it is levied at 20%. Uh, we'll see a little bit later that uh, pre in previous previous years, uh, it, was a, it was levied at a lower rate. Uh, there are certain kinds of dividends that do not attract dividends tax. That is not part of our financial accounting to discussion. However, you will know and you will be taught about that uh, when it comes to the subjects of taxation one, which deals with individuals and taxation two, which deals with businesses. Dividends tax is a fairly recent tax. It only came into effect on the 1st of April, 2012. Up until the 31st of March 2012, uh, companies were levied a secondary tax on all dividends declared. That was called secondary tax on companies or STC. The important thing to, to know uh, when it comes to the difference between secondary tax on companies and dividends tax is that STC, secondary tax on companies, was levied on the company. So the company was the one that bore the tax. In other words, it was an expense for the company. In the case of dividends tax, which we now have since the 1st of April 2012, the tax is not a cost to the company. It is a cost for the shareholder. However, the company has the duty or responsibility to pay the tax over to the revenue service on behalf of the shareholders which means that the shareholders will only get their part of the dividend after tax has been deducted by the company, and then the tax will be paid over by the company to the revenue service. Initially, when uh, dividends tax came into effect in 2012, it was levied at 12.5%. Uh, a few years after that, it was raised to 15%. Currently, it is levied at 20% which is still lower than, uh, than, than an income tax rate. As mentioned earlier, the term withholding tax, which applies to uh, employees tax, it also applies to dividends tax, uh, means that the company has the duty to withhold or to subtract the tax before they pay over the net amount to either the employees or the shareholders. So that means the expense is not to the company. The tax is not levied on the company. In the case of dividends tax, it is levied on the shareholders. In the case of employees tax, it is levied on the employees. So it means even though the company pays over the tax on behalf of in our, in our discussion on behalf of the shareholders, it is not an expense 
to the company. So dividends tax will not be found in your statement of performance, whether, whether you draw up a statement of profit and loss or total comprehensive income, it is not an expense to the company. So let's look at an example. In example one, we have the company X Limited. It has a financial year end on the 31st of December. On the 1st of January 2012, so that is at the beginning of a particular financial year, the following balances appeared inter alia in X Limited's trial balance. By the way, inter alia is a Latin term which means amongst others. So it's not the only balance, there are many other balances. Uh, so we have got a balance of ordinary share capital, clearly it's equity, so that will be a credit balance of 2,400,000 rands. We have retained earnings, that is our accumulated profit, so it's part of our equity, so that will also be a credit balance of 600,000 rands. Then we see that X Limited had a profit before tax for the year ended the 31st of December 2020, and that amounted to 1.2 million rands. At the end of that year, on the 31st of December 2020, the following transactions must still be recorded. We must still provide for the income tax expense of 500,000 rand, so we must accrue that. And then also, secondly, ordinary dividends of 100,000 rands were declared. A dividends tax rate of 20% is applicable. The payment due to the ordinary shareholders and the revenue service will be made on the 15th of January 2021. So that means we are accruing that liability or those two liabilities, the one liability towards our shareholders, the other liability towards the revenue service. And uh, since we are only going to be paying it on the 15th of January 2021, which is after our financial year end, it means those liabilities will fall under our current liabilities in our statement of financial position. Just to continue with that same example, what do we need to do? What are we required to do? We must now provide the journal entries to record those above transactions in the previous slides on the 31st of December 2020. Uh, narrations may be omitted, but please, please do not forget to insert uh, your dates. We also are required to provide an extract from the Statement of Comprehensive Income for the year ended 31st of December 2020. We can start with profit before tax. We must disclose in the Statement of Changes in Equity what needs to be disclosed. We already know that dividends represent a distribution of retained earnings, so that will have to appear in our statement of changes in equity. We also need to disclose the equity and liability section of the statement of financial position as at the end of that 2020 financial year. Then we need to provide the note for dividends for the year ended the 31st of December 2020. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, sorry, that should be 2020. I, I just see the date. I'll, I'll fix it on the other slide. Uh, the journal entries to record any of the above transactions on the 15th of January 2021. Uh, right, so we know that is in the next financial year and we already know that that will represent the payment of the net dividends over to the shareholders and the payment of the dividends tax to the revenue service. So here is the solution. First of all, we know we have to accrue the income tax expense. So being an expense, we have to debit that account, the income tax expense account. Once again, uh, please bear in mind that the word expense is quite important to distinguish it from income tax paid, which is which represents a cash flow, which we are going to be dealing with in the second semester, or from tax payable, uh, which clearly indicates a liability. And then we have to raise the actual liability, as we've just mentioned, current tax payable, 
right? And that is exactly the description we are going to have in our statement of financial position, current tax payable, colon, what kind of tax does this represent? Income tax, right? So we debit income tax expense by 500,000 rands. We raise the liability current tax payable, colon, income tax, 500,000 rands. Now, when it comes to the, the dividend that has been declared, we have declared an ordinary dividend of 100,000 rands. So it is a distribution of our retained earnings. So we have to debit the distribution. The account that we debit is ordinary dividend. At the same time, we have to raise a liability towards our shareholders. So the liability that we raise is Towards ordinary shareholders, that is the name of our account for 100,000 rands. But then, one little thing that we must not forget, we are not going to be paying 100,000 rands to our shareholders because we have to withhold the tax on that 100,000 rands. We are only going to pay 80,000 rands to our shareholders, right? The other 20,000 rands, which represents the dividends tax, will be paid over to the revenue service. So we have to adjust our liability towards our ordinary shareholders. We don't owe them 100,000 rands, we owe them 80,000 rands. So that means we have to debit that ordinary shareholders account, which we have uh, just in the previous entry credited with 100,000 rands to reflect the actual amount owing to them, which is 80,000 rands, which means we have to go and debit ordinary shareholders by 20,000 rands. And at the same time, we have to go and raise the liability towards the relevant revenue service. In our case, South African Revenue Service, uh, but whichever uh, domain or country you are in, you will then raise the liability towards that revenue service. So, again, we are going to credit current tax payable colon. But in this case, it does not represent income tax, it represents dividends tax. So the account that we are going to create is called current tax payable colon dot dot dividends tax. 20,000 rands, that is the levy, uh, the applicable tax rate on, on dividends, 20, 20%. So 20% 20 of 100,000 gives us the 20,000 rands. So in our statement of comprehensive income, what do we have to disclose there? We have mentioned in the first term when we, when we dealt with IAS 1 that the income tax expense is a disclosable item. It must be disclosed on the face of your statement of comprehensive income. So there we will have profit before tax and then the income tax expense, which is clearly a negative uh, and then thereafter we have the profit for the period. In our statement of changes in equity, what is important to note here is that from the perspective of the company, we have declared dividends of 100,000 rands. Irrespective of the fact that we are going to be paying over 80,000 rands to the shareholders, and 20,000 rands, the withholding tax, which we are going to be paying over to the revenue service, from our perspective as a company, the dividends that we have declared is 100,000 rands. And once again, remember, it is a distribution of your retained earnings or accumulated profits. It's not an expense. It doesn't affect your ordinary share capital. You are distributing retained earnings, so that will be a negative in your retained earnings column. Then the extract in our statement of financial position. Now we know that the, the, the dividends were only paid on the 15th of January 2021. So that is after the financial year end. We also know that the dividends tax will only, well, was only paid or will only be paid on the 15th of January 2021. So at the end of our financial year, which is the 31st of December 2020, both of those items is, uh, both of them are still current obligations. Right, you remember the, the definition of a liability. 
So that is a present obligation. So there we have our obligation with regards to income tax towards the revenue service. And this is exactly how we need to describe it in terms of uh, both IAS 1 and IAS 32. Current tax payable, colon, income tax, 500,000 rands. And then we have another line item, current tax payable, colon, dividend tax, 20,000 rands. Right. And then clearly we still owe that 80,000 rands uh, of dividends to the shareholders. So that will also be under our current liabilities. In the case of the then after the financial year end on the 15th of January 2021, we are now actually going to pay our liabilities. We have to pay the ordinary shareholders that part of the dividend that they are going to be receiving. We have to pay the revenue service, the tax on the dividends. So therefore, we have to release ourselves of those liabilities. So we are going to debit the ordinary shareholders liability account. What is the balance on that currently? 80,000 rands. We no longer owe it to them once we've paid it. So that means we are going to debit ordinary shareholders with 80,000 rands. The balance on the current tax payable colon dividend tax account is 20,000 rands. Once we pay it over to the revenue service, we no longer owe them. So we have to relieve or release that liability of 20,000 rands. So we need to go and debit current tax payable, colon, dividend tax. Right, so we have gotten rid of the two liabilities. Clearly, the money is going to go out of our, or flow out of our bank account, so we have to credit the bank account. Right, there are some comments on the distribution. We already have mentioned that the fact is that from the company's perspective, 100,000 rands worth of dividends have been declared. So in our statement of changes in equity, that will be uh, shown as a distribution of our retained earnings. Uh, when it comes to the liability towards the South African Revenue Service or any other revenue service, we know that we owe them income tax of 500,000 rands and dividends tax of 20,000 rands. However, one of the requirements of IAS 1, as, as we've seen in the first term, is that liabilities towards the revenue service should be disclosed separately. You, you remember we spoke about set-off. Uh, you, 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 you cannot make an arrangement with the revenue service if you owe them an amount of money and they owe you an amount of money to simply uh, pay the difference. Right, so those are individual amounts owing to uh, the revenue service. Thank you.